<laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dylan. Austin. That's Austin. <laughs> 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 he can't introduce his damn self. He just has to scream his name like a <laughs> Austin. <laughs> oh. One downside of this guitar. I am shocked I haven't lost it, but this little black piece, which goes on this switch right here, which has never been glued on. And I've had this guitar for years. And you just won't glue it back on? I just, I don't remember. Every time it's like, it's on now. I won't remember. Why would I remember? It's on. Stop the podcast. Glue it right now. I can't do that. <laughs> contractually we have to do this spotify <laughs> says so i wish <laughs> maybe you will one day but not right now so welcome to the podcast this is theseus podcast it's on our music channel because we don't know what else to do on it it's a cool podcast i like doing it it is pretty fun it's i feel like it's different i feel like people haven't done this or they or they do and they're like done they've done it in a different way yeah i think any music podcast that i've seen doesn't really involve like just jamming with it i think there's a lot where it's like you'll have guests come on i think probably the closest thing to it i wouldn't say it's too much of a podcast they probably could do it but drumeo i feel like name yeah because drumeo has like a whole bunch of people in like a back room studio section and they have just like a drummer in the drum room and they're just basically trying to get them to play songs that they've never heard and Stuff like that. So it's almost kind of like a hangout, but they don't post them as such. It's just like, it's more focused on just like drums versus like podcast with every kind of musician. Right. There is a difference though. Like the Drumeo thing is very cool. The fact that you can do that. And I'm glad they did. You know, they started doing it. It is cool, but it is a little bit different. You could, you could freestyle drums to like anything. Mm Mm-hmm don't really have to stay in key as long as you can keep beat but if you had guitarists who could do the same thing they would have to be exceptional every time like you couldn't just take a like local bands guitarist and be like hey play to this song you've never heard here's the here's the drums here's the vocals there's no bass just play what you think yeah uh and the fact the fact is is like you're missing bass guitar the bass guitar would give it away a lot so they would try to play off of it so it's a little bit harder with you know guitar to do that you could try it but i bet you would get a lot of bad stuff i know uh drumio has like a a split part of it to where they do have like keyboardists and stuff like that keyboardists are different breed man they already know like a lot generally not all of them do but like as long as they can hear the key they can see the pattern now the pattern is the same thing on the guitar you could do it it's just harder. <laughs> it's jumbled. It it's not a, a straight harder. line. No, it's not. It's not a straight line, left <laughs> or right, 12 notes. It is fifths. It's done in fifths. Well, four, yeah, fifths, like every. So it's just harder. <laughs> it's harder to do. You could do it, but you'd have to be like Tosin and Bossy and Tim Anson and the craziest people. They're all so good. Jazz guitarists are really, really good at freestyling. They're so good at just improvising. Yeah, I can agree with that. There was one dude, uh, he was a jazz-styled guitarist back in high school. I feel like he could he could rip some guitar. He could rip some some frets. <laughs> Let's make it nice and clean. <laughs> rip some frets. Yeah, that's right. So what's been going on with you, man? Tell me the story that you were about to tell me. Uh, It was about... Okay. So to catch everyone up, uh, I did a... Like a two-day radio tour tour, with uh, Letdown, and we played Fresno, California, and Phoenix, Arizona. That Fresno one was a blast. So we get there, and uh, they have this like band section set up. They've got Gibsons on the wall. they got a DW drum kit. Like they've, they've got money into it. And we go there, we'd play our acoustic set, we'd do the meet and greet photos and all that stuff with everyone. And whenever we get done, uh, the owner offers to buy us food. So we ate that, which that kept us there a little bit longer. Just long enough for the guitarist, who is the owner of the place, who just fed us, to be like, get on those drums Let's play some songs. (laughs) Of course. And at first I was freaking out because the dude's like 
late fifties, maybe early sixties. I don't know. And he was just like, Hey, do you know this 40 year old song? Do you know this 35 year old song? And I'm just like, I have no idea. But luckily, uh, one of the guys that was the drummer of that band, uh, he was there and he was kind of coaching me through it. So he'd be like, do a shuffle right here. One, two, three shuffle. And like, just basically helping me through these songs. And, oh my God, it, it actually turned out to be a blast. Like we, I played the first song with them and I would say like first song went well, second kind of okay. I probably played for like an hour, hour and a half almost. <laughs> an hour extra. Blake totally wanted to leave. Yeah, we, no, Blake was just hanging out. He's Blake hanging was, out? Yeah, he's play, hanging out, getting drunk. And, and then all of a sudden... Dom comes over and he starts res- like recording and all that stuff. He's like, "Oh my god!" Like, he looks like he's like he's up there killing it. And then all of a sudden, Dom just grabs a microphone and just starts singing. So him and I are just back and forthing like our videos to each other. And he was recording me playing drums. I was trying to get him doing some vocal stuff whenever I could. And oh, it just turned out to be so fun. We ended up playing. Yeah, like all together, probably about an hour, hour and a half. What and, a set. <laughs> and the story that they told me about these drums, it was a DW drum kit. And uh, the owner told the drummer dude, go out, go find a good, decent drum set and just buy it. Don't worry about the cost. Apparently, this dude bought it from either one of the members or like the the direct drummer of Bon Jovi. Oh, cool. So That's he, awesome. he bought a kit that was he said used for like a twenty fourteen Bon Jovi tour. I couldn't find it. I tried to look it up. But he said it was and he seemed like he was knowledgeable, so I wanna say I can agree with it. I mean it's still cool. Yeah, it was like a a gold sparkle DW kit and it was cool. I tried to text Cassie that, and the autocorrect said Bob Joni. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying. I was Bob, in my own. Bob Bon Jovi, Bob Joni. <laughs> I was in my own little headspace, just laughing my ass off. Autocorrects are the best. Some Bob Joni. You listen some, to some Bob Joni? Uh, dude, I've been listening to Bob Joni all that day long. Let's play some, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that that first show in Fresno is pretty awesome. Like, I think. Uh, just the overall experience. What was crazy though is all the staff, everyone that was working in that place would come up and sing or come up and like play the bass guitar or come up and play guitar. They're all musicians. Yeah. Just love the music life. It was just rotating people. Like there were like almost 10 people that were rotating, like just song after song. It was awesome. That's really cool. Let me tune this thing. All right, sorry. That's really awesome. I wish I could do stuff like that. I will one day, right? <laughs> yes. I want to play really, really bad. That's why I was trying to write stuff today, but I also want to shoot videos on it. So I had really good motivation today. Actually, the fact that you came over was actually a step in the way of that video. But I was like, okay, if I can Damn. make this video, we can start putting out content similar to it. It would be awesome if you were here for it, but we can't every single time. So yeah, like you could make something independently for yourself at your house it's like oh this is what i'm gonna do today let's see if i can do it and then i was trying to do the same thing this is what i'm gonna do today let's see if i can do it and i got i got halfway through it i actually just had to write write a couple songs write a couple riffs and write a couple hooks was the main thing get three hooks down to where it's like okay these songs can come out or they can be written but that's the thing is like we have one song out right now and yes that song's two years old now I know it's been a while. Uh, it's coming up. I think it's coming up on two years old. Uh, well, cause Blake's the one that like, I just got my two year anniversary with Blake. Right. And then I did the tour with you all. And then shortly after we wrote that. But the thing is, is that like that sound is pretty particular. Like mm-hmm. the, we wrote a song after that called obsessed. That sound is really picky, but like, I wish I could just find a way to write easily. 
because yeah. those songs are very difficult to write. And I don't know why they're so difficult to write. I don't even know if they're fucking good sometimes. Yeah. I'm just like, God, I wish they were. I just wish it was easier to put out this type of music. But I don't care what the sound sounds like. As long as we get enough songs to where I'm like, okay, this is my style. I should push for this. The thing is, is that I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like I want I want that, uh, you know, was it liquid? Not, not uh, liquid metal. Like. The radio station? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, the fucking, the uh, XM radio station that everyone uses. Octane? Yeah, Octane. I would be fine with an Octane sound. I don't care as long as we get to play out. Yeah. Of course, my brain says, my brain's trying to do all of it at one time. So it's like, I'm trying to think of the show while I'm thinking of the music and how it could relate in the <clears> show. <throat> really, I just need to make the music before anything else. Yeah. Just write the songs. That's it. And then I'm trying to produce videos at the same time. I'm not saying that any of this is an excuse. I want to produce the videos and I want to make the music. It just takes a lot of time and there's going to be an exceptional amount of motivation. And I think the easiest way to get motivated is for us to physically work together because there's just nothing else to do. except yeah. Well, I mean, we have tons of stuff to do, but if we focus on just that, making a video content for that day and it just so happens that we write a song that day, that's awesome. Well, uh, first step to doing that, uh, we can try Monday. If you got nothing going on Monday, uh, can come over and just... I, mean, I usually don't have anything going on Monday, but... Hammer out some ideas. It depends on what days we really want to do it. This is all scheduling. This is behind the scenes right now, almost. Yeah. It's scheduling. So it's like one day we could have writing to where it's just like we just write. And I'll try to write all week long, but just writing... One day where we just have to do editing, like editing for everything, yeah. preemptive editing and getting out those those main videos for the gaming out. It's a it's we're sitting on it. We're sitting on it. We don't need to sit on it any longer. So it's like if we put out a video like that one guy does every three fucking days, he seems to do well. Yeah. And his videos are long and fucking boring. <laughs> They're boring. He's got a good personality and his TikToks is what really helped him. But man, I was just like shocked when I saw his amount of subscribers and I was like, dude, this guy's putting out 30 minute, 40 minute videos and he's getting like 70,000 views a video. Damn. So he's doing really well. And I'm like, we're right there. We can do the same thing. So I want one day specifically where we just held each other accountable for the day where it's like, I come over to your house and we just edit. Yeah. And then another day where we can like write music. And then today, it just depends on what we want to do too, because we could specifically cut out an afternoon to just do the gaming stuff just one gaming video mm -hmm. but i don't know how much time you want to dedicate to it i don't really think we need for the gaming stuff i feel like that actually recording the gaming stuff i think requires the smallest amount of time amongst everything yeah. that we do for sure. Like, it's also the most successful thing we have i think within like 30 to 45 minutes we should have enough for what we want to do. Even if it's like a good 20 minutes of one game, a good 20 minutes of a different game. Like I feel right. like, well, obviously if it's a little bit slower of a game, we might have to take it to like 30 or 40 minutes of a game. But right. I, I wish we had a <clears throat> separate PC just for multiplayer games. So when you came over, it's like, we want to do a multiplayer game. You just sign into that PC. Yeah. I wish we had that set up. Now, of course, I'm redoing my garage to where it's like that is going to be our studio that we're going to make as much possible content out of as we can. You can mm -hmm. e you can even come over during the week and like record your stuff if you need to. Like that's an option that I'm trying to work on. Uh, but we got to like really soundproof it well. Yeah. That I want that to be our content machine. Just that part, that garage right there is to be just that's everything that we do and we can get it all done. We're separated from everyone. Yeah. We are like, no one's going to come near us. This is the room. I think too. Um, I mean, since I have a tour coming up, which this is, it it's fun. It's cool. I like being on tour, but I hate that it like slows everything else down. And so to try to combat that Monday, if you want we could just do the editing session that you're talking about. Dude, if we just sit there and just pick edit. something to edit, like you just did, you just edit the TikToks and I just edit the main video, and just what? No one, please, no one bother us. We're working, like working, and then yeah. hopefully by the same day, 
we can collaborate on a thumbnail. Because mm-hmm. I've noticed that the people with the best thumbnails that are in actual, like, that, that's their job, they generally, like, have either have people or they collaborate on a thumbnail to try to get the most attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's definitely, whenever I get back from this tour, I think we really, we should have a list of just, like, scheduled not events, but like just basically a schedule for ourselves. Like I want to have this day is going to be this, this day is going to be this. And this day is going to be like, like just, just trying to get everything to where we do hold ourselves accountable a little bit more. Cause every week when it's like, Oh, well does this day work? Does this day work? No. Okay. Well this day is going to work this week. This day is going to work the next week. Right. But the problem is, is that we always, that's how it's been lately. But the problem is, is that we're always like, well, we actually have to shoot a main video and a main podcast. Cause we just don't have the time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think the thing that holds us back the most, and this is something that we both should just get fucking really great at is thumbnails. Yeah. It is the, it realistically, we can edit the video and get it done in the same day. I can get a video done like a, a good 10 minute video done in like an hour and a half but the fucking thumbnail is like folding laundry (laughs) (laughs) dude seven to ten business days i'll fold that shit you can wash 10 sets of laundry like in the one day but then it's just gonna sit there for two weeks dude i don't don't know what it is and i i told myself i was like i know for a fact that is where we're falling short is thumbnails because we have three videos right now one of them i actually got the thumbnail done for we have two podcasts that we haven't released that just need thumbnails like mm-hmm. they're uploaded already. They're there they're, and they'll be released as soon as the thumbnail's done. It's just that, uh, I think my thumbnails are getting significantly better. I, I do think that we need to prep our thumbnails a little bit as in like, remember that day we just took photos specifically yeah. for thumbnails. We need to have those as transparent pre-cut already. That yeah. will save us so much time. I think it is just a day where we just, okay, we're taking photos for thumbnails that has to get done today. Uh, we do like six different emotions and we try to look our best for it for them. And it is what it is. We have transparents and then we send them to each other. If like, this is a transparent of that. So for future proofing, just load it in, bam, the main part of the thumbnail is done. Yeah. Which is our faces. If we want to add them. So I think, uh, whenever I get back from that, we should have, we should have a schedule like down to a T on what needs to happen. Like, and Brandy supports me. She totally supports it. Mm-hmm. She is entirely on board. She's like, if you need to come home at 9 o'clock, come home at 9. Just leave a day for me. That's what she wants. She wants a day for me and her completely. And I'm like, I completely get it. You know, every other day that we're not, I will completely not focus on it. So it's like, we, ha- we have to get, I got to get the main video done and at least two or three TikToks done that day. Mm-hmm. I don't have to get the main video done. But I don't want to be editing here all the time. You know, I want time with her. I want time with actually writing music, uh, just not editing and focusing on that. It's mm-hmm. like I, I want to post content daily kind of a thing. I don't want to edit content daily. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're just going to have to get all that sorted because I really think we do need to hold ourselves to the schedule more because I feel like that is – what's keeping things from coming out it really is i think it truly is i think that's the whole reason where we are not further than we are is because we don't just like hey man like a video has to come out this week there has to be a video this week it has to happen friday it has to be because clearly consistently shows that we got fifty thousand followers on tiktok from being very consistent for a very long period of time yeah it wasn't a overnight thing it was very very much it took a while okay so i'm gonna try I mean, I know that you got a tour coming up. That's going to fuck this all up. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm I'm really going to try. I think we do have like a little table space and stuff like that. But I mean, if we get into a venue, we get done playing. uh, There are going to be have like there are going to be nights to be had where it's just me editing. Like I'm going to have to be in the green room or something and just zoning out and editing. And I'm going to try to uh, stick to that as much as I possibly can because Seeing the results from TikTok, I know being consistent is just like not being consistent is not going to do anything for you anyway. So yeah. just be consistent. That's the only way you're going to 
really grow. I completely agree. And watching this guy's videos, this other guy's videos, seeing his videos, and I'm just like, man, his videos suck. They just suck. But he's still raking in 80,000 people watching per video. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's doing something right now. I did kind of like... I copied his videos just a little bit just to try to catch more attention because, I mean, if he's doing something right, I'm going to analyze it and try to do the same thing. He does give his – he does at the very beginning of every video give an explanation of what he's going to be trying to do. We don't really do that, but that's okay because what we do is a little different than what he does. It's kind of still the same thing, but it's a little different. As far as the music stuff, music stuff is going to be – it's truly going to be like uh, – I think Casey Neistat's is a – great ex like example of how we should vlog mm -hmm. because he vlogs completely chronologically for the day so if we want to if we want to start you know filming uh filming for the day film the b-roll next because we think a b-roll part would be good next film the drum part explain something like i tried it today and i'm like oh this could work i can see how this can work because mm -hmm. you can get it done really quickly one it, it, it it's chronological so it's already <clears throat> in line for you when you go to edit it like it is literally right in line you just drag it in and then cut it up to where it's shortened and then you cut out things that you don't want it's it's really shouldn't be that hard did uh have you ever seen michael reeves talk about how he edits no it's really it's weird because uh, yeah that that's a completely different take i was watching michael reeves and he was talking about how he edits his videos he'll literally film one part Sit down at his laptop, edit it, and he's like, okay, what should I do next? Okay, I'll do this part. He sets everything up, films this part, and like films like one or two parts, sits down, edit the video, and be like, okay, what should I do next on this part? <laughs> like, it's very, very weird, but I think, I mean, he has videos every seven months or whatever now. Right. Now, the only problem I have with Michael <laughs> Reeves' take on that is it will take all damn day. <clears throat> yeah. I think of it as a production, like Casey Neistat used to put out amazing vlogs daily. Mm -hmm. You know? He used to put out amazing vlogs daily. So he clearly shot all of it at one time and then post-productioned it. And it's like I go and see, you know, when Blake went and did the hate myself music video and I shot all the background stuff, they were doing it. They weren't doing it that way. They were doing it like scene, next part, scene, next part, scene, next part. Yeah. And they were keeping it in mind at where they were. doesn't mean the edit was going to come out the same way, but it was practically, it was all right there. Now, of course that was all planned and this is all kind of done differently, but I will say that it felt great. Like making improv kind of improv uh, scripts for myself, something that was going to, they were going to take away from it, but I had to keep them on the hook. That was the main thing from watching Casey Neistat's videos. The way that he phrases things keeps you on the hook every time to go through the B roll to the next part. Specifically what I said today was when I see artists who are signed to a bigger label, it is more about qual quantity than quality. And you would think that it would be like, what do you mean? Everyone that I've ever heard that has a good song has quality. And then later on in the video, I explained that basically the quality is assumed. You have to have the quality regardless. Yeah. So you have to have an immense quantity of songs because like the person that we know, they could, someone could shoot down like 40 or 50 of their songs. Yeah. It's like, I don't like that. That doesn't sound good for you. That doesn't sound good for you. That doesn't sound good for you. You put all this time into writing all these songs. The quality is assumed in the music industry, but no one ever thinks that it's quantity. Yeah, it really is insane because I have heard how many songs he has, and God, it's just, there's literally probably, like his demo folder, whenever he's scrolling through it, I guarantee there's probably 70 songs that were not used for, like, Letdown. Oh my God. Like, that, that's nuts. It's the same way with, like, uh, supposedly there's a vault of Prince's stuff. Oh, Prince yeah. has over 2,000 songs in his vault that no one's heard. I know. He, I, that's... he would. He used to write the song. I think they said this. It was just, it's some interview that I saw. They said they would write I've the song, it. pull it out, stick it in the file, or like if it was a if it was a tape or if it was a vinyl for some reason. If they were recording straight to vinyl, which would be weird, uh, they would just put it right away. It's probably mm -hmm. the CD. I mean, it was the '80s and '90s, so it's probably straight to CD. CD's done. And it goes in this folder. I know that's... that's insane that Prince has that many songs and someone's going to get the rights one day. Someone is going to get the rights to those songs. And they're going to start releasing new Prince albums. 
Just imagine someone posts one album called The Vault, and there's two thousand songs oh, in that album. There's no way. It, but you all, you would also see like the bad side of Prince. Like he wrote this song and it sucked. Yeah. Because he was a volume writer. He wrote songs in volume. That's how. And then there was also that saying of like, uh, you, you know, the the guy who was like write write a write a perfect novel. He had like, the, have you heard that one? Mm-mm. It's a he's there was a professor. This might be a little bit different. It might be off take, but uh, it might not be exactly this, but he had two classes where he was like, okay, these people write a perfect novel or a perfect paper. Yeah. Per- we'll say a perfect short story, write a perfect short story. I don't care what you got to do, but by the end of it, you need one story that is perfect. And they had another class that said, just write as many short stories as you can, as many as possible. And supposedly the result was not only was the people that wrote in quantity writing more, but they were also writing better things faster so they were writing a better story than the people who were just doing one perfect story they were writing better stories faster than the person who only had to write one Mm -hmm. which is awesome that literally quantity matters it matters greatly yeah and that's how some people like i know whatever we write it could take days to a week to get a song down and some of these producers are literally making songs in like three hours. But I can do the same thing, but I'm doing something that I've never done. Yeah. I'm I'm doing vocals. I'm doing lyrics. And I, I'm, I get stuck really hard on stuff. I don't try to. But if it doesn't sound the way, if I don't sing it the way that I want to, and I don't hear it the way I heard it in my head, I want to keep doing it until I hear it right. Mm-hmm. I, I, can write a, I can write the music in two hours. I can write music in two hours. Like I have done that several times where I was just like, I don't care. I'm just going to write my guitar parts until I am fucking done. And I can get it done in two hours. See, I, that's what I want to try to do. Like I do want to try to throw in more ideas for writing, but I haven't had the, the confidence on writing guitar. And it's really hard to write a song with only drums. <laughs> yeah, except for Moby Dick. That one was easy. <laughs> I don't Led remember Zeppelin. how it sounds. I don't either. <laughs> song from the seventies. I don't have any idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just think like this is stuff that we're supposed to not talk about on, on screen, but this is stuff we're like supposed to like figure out later, but how much time before that, uh, how much time do you have before that tour? Uh, I've got Monday and Tuesday. And then you're on tour. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, I have to go to Chicago to rehearse Thursday, Summerfest, Friday, probably Minneapolis for Friday, Saturday, and then probably come home either late Saturday, late Sunday, depending on flights and then pack up, gather a few things and then go to work Monday, do the final things I need to do before I go for a month and then the ninth. Uh, oh, the the eighth after work. Either fly back to uh, Chicago, ride with everyone, or just go straight to like Cleveland. Okay, okay. Well, let me know when you're coming back, like specifically what week, and we'll really try to keep on that. I guess for now we're just gonna have to work on our own. As far as yeah, as far as uh, like I, I do want to try to have nights where like we get in, like maybe a Discord call and try to work on something. Um. We'll see if that's possible, but at least with like, uh, or just editing stuff like, uh, just just a call where we're like, all right, man, this is where I'm at. What do you think? Yeah. Like a live screen of like something to keep us accountable. It's like, we have to get it done this. Cause I don't, I don't want it to be where like two weeks goes by and we haven't texted each other, haven't done anything. Like I wanted, I want there to be a very good back and forth of some kind of idea, whether it be a TikTok uh video edit music riff something yeah yeah something something being made but focused so mm-hmm. if it's going to be music we have to focus on music for the day if it's going to be editing got to focus on the editing for the day cuz like I still have my laptop so if I like I'll bring uh my little solo and a pad and I'll try to see if there's just any ideas that will come up and uh I guess just take it from there, see what I can do. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is going to be a short one because technically, yeah, my normal cutoff for us playing is nine. What it time is, is it 9 right 23. now? 
So we're going to play one more song, and this is going to be a nice and short, clean, clean podcast, 30 minutes. Thank you guys for watching. We're going to play, we're going to play uh, Bulls on Parade. <laughs> <laughs>